All right, what's up, YouTube? Back here again with my second build. So this time I'm doing things a little bit differently. Hopefully it's gonna make this video go a little bit smoother than the last ones. So full disclosure, I have already built this PC um, just to make sure that everything worked. And then I have since taken most of it apart. So you're not gonna see any, you know, a lot of unboxings or anything like that. So most of this has been out of the box already. I just wanted to make sure that it actually worked before I went ahead and, you know, put it all together for you guys and fired it up. So got all the parts in yesterday. Today is October 4th. Got most of the parts yesterday, October 3rd. Got my graphics card today, October 4th. So that this stuff is brand new as of October 4th. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do a quick dis uh, description about what the products are as I'm sort of building it for you guys. Since I put it together already, hopefully it's going to go a little bit quicker than a normal video. But with all that being said, we're starting out right now. This is going to be a mini ITX build. This is the Bitfinex or Bitphoenix portal. So just kind of give you guys a little quick view of it. It does have the window on top. They come in black or white. White is pretty difficult to find. Got the power button here. So that's the case. The cool thing about this case, if you guys have never seen it, all the guts basically come in here. So I've already taken the screws out. And the way this thing works is you're just gonna pull it out. And then this is all the guts. You got a few wires tucked inside here for your for your case, your power button, USBs, 3.0s, and this just slides out so it sits on this rail. It's not the, you don't really want to build on top of this rail because it can be a little, it's not flimsy. This is a full metal case, so it's really solid, but you just don't want to put any extra strain on that if you don't have to. So we're going to take that out, just tuck all this stuff back in here, and get this out of the way for now, and then this is what we're going to be building in. So I've already, like I said, built in this. So it did come with a, right here, a 120 millimeter fan. Was already pre-installed here. I've already taken that out because we're not going to need it. And then it also comes with another 80 millimeter fan right here. We're going to go ahead and leave that in. So the first thing I think will make this process easier so with this and I mentioned there I wanted to mention this before when you guys are building a PC if you ever get into it a little magnetic tray goes a long way it's really helpful they're pretty inexpensive and then just a couple of screwdrivers and then just pop it off and again we'll just take these out so we don't lose them so that's the case it also came with two 3.5 inch hard drive bays down here. I've since taken those out because this is a mini ITX case. You can see it doesn't have a lot of space. So just, I'm not using hard drive or uh, hard drives in here. So I took those out so we can kind of tuck some of the cables in here because cable management can kind of be a pain in a case this small. So with that said, we're gonna move this out of the way. Started with the first part here. So to start this build off right here, we're going with the Aorus Z390 Pro Wi-Fi motherboard, Mini ITX. So like I said, I've already built this, so I've already pulled it out of the uh, box and out of the bag. Came right here with the IO shield. This one is kind of nice, it's got that padding on it. So just a little bit softer on your hands, just a nice touch. And then right here, we have the motherboard. And this thing, it does come with two M.2 slots. And we already have one pre-installed on the back here. And we're gonna go ahead and get the CPU installed. So for the CPU for this build, so we got the Gigabyte Z390 Mini ITX motherboard. And this is kind of the, uh, the highlight of the build, but since it's going to the motherboard first, we're gonna bring it out first. So we're gonna be pairing that with the i9-9900K the best CPU really, you know, on, on the market 
for commercial you know type gamers and PC enthusiasts so we went with that we figured we might as well go big on this build so like I said I've already opened it and if you guys do decide to buy this computer from me and you want the boxes I'm gonna keep all the boxes so they'll be yours if you want them I'll ship them to you as well so you can have the nice i9k so opening it up in this case can be a little tricky to get back in place but there it is i9 set that out of the way for now and let's bring our motherboard back in here So with the Intel, it's a slightly different motherboard layout uh, as far as what the, the CPU socket, but it's the same in respect to how you want to insert it. So just like on a Ryzen chip, it's going to have that little arrow, which I should probably say a Ryzen chip is just like an Intel chip since you know Intel's been around, but you're going to line that yellow arrow up with the arrow on the motherboard so right there and then just go ahead and kind of wiggle it in there till it drops in and then you're going to just close that down just like that here for the ram i went ahead and got this only has two ram slots in it so i went ahead and got two 16 gigabyte sticks of ram they are G Skill Trident Z 3200 uh, RAM. Like I said, 16 gigs a piece. Just real nice looking, real solid metal, you know, heat sink on these things. So, no different than any other motherboard. You're just going to make sure that you pull these little lock switches back. And then, RAM only really fits in one way, so you're just going to drop it in. You should get the click. And then get the second click, make sure it's seated in there well. There she goes. Like I said, I'm not using hard drives, like uh, SATA hard drives in this case because cable management is already a pain. So what we went ahead and did this time is just two one terabyte M.2 NVMEs and we went with the Intel 660P. I put these in the last build that I did, the Ryzen 5 3600 uh, RX 5700 build. And I'll link the videos again as well with an additional video um, from Linus. So there's one video from Linus and one from Tech Deals kind of describing the Intel 660p. I know Samsung's sort of the king of the mountain when it comes to hard drives and all that, but you know, value for the money. I think uh, in tech deals and Linus will explain it that for most people an Intel 660p, just the price to performance, it's kind of hard to beat. So we went with two of these for two terabytes total hard drive space. So and then on here, this one is going to be seated under the heat sink here. Just going to lift that off and go ahead and slot this in. And then slot the heat sink back in over the top. And like I stated before in the other build videos and computer videos, the reason I do this as far as, you know, putting these videos together is just because I want, if anybody that's, you know, looking at this video because 
you know, you saw an ad on Craigslist or you saw, you know, eBay or Mercari let go. You saw one of those and, oh, for the love of God. I just want, you know, people to know and feel comfortable that this is a good computer because, you know, I've looked at used computers and stuff online and they're just, you know, dusty, dirty looking pictures of a computer that looks old and worn out and you don't feel like, or you, you know, you're a little hesitant about are you going to get your actual money's worth for that computer. So I do this because I want you guys to see that this is actually nice computer, brand new parts. All these parts were bought off eBay or Amazon, brand new. So you don't have to worry about, you know, are you getting a, a lousy, worn out computer? So that's kind of the reason why I, I put these videos out there. I know they're not great. I'm not a, a you know videographer or anything. I just want you guys to feel confident that what you're getting from me is actually a quality piece of equipment. So we got the motherboard put together. So now we're gonna bring the guts of this case back over here and get it installed. So this motherboard or this case does come with the motherboard standoffs already installed. So we're gonna go ahead and put the IO shield on. And kind of the other reason for making these videos, I'm not the world's best, you know, computer builder. Um, oh, and before I go too far, this motherboard, uh, what's cool about this case, the motherboard essentially goes in upside down. So the PCIe graphics card slot is gonna be at the top of the case. So you wanna make sure that you put it in properly or else you know, you're not gonna be able to get your graphics card in there. So, and then just go ahead and fit it in here. But like I said, one of the other reasons I wanted to make these videos is so that if you, know, you guys get this computer from me and later on down the road, maybe you upgrade something, add a new part here, and maybe you've never taken a computer apart or put one together, maybe you can go back and just watch these videos and and kind of see how you put a computer together or specifically this computer so you'll feel confident that you can maybe go in and change out a hard drive or maybe you get a new CPU cooler or something that you want to put on here and you know or whatever it happens to be you if you're not terribly familiar with it you'll have a guide so there you have it motherboards installed and this is a Wi-Fi I mentioned that earlier but a Wi-Fi motherboard and I don't use Wi-Fi on my computer it's hooked up to Ethernet but I like having it as an option so I tend to try to always grab a Wi-Fi motherboard so there's all the pieces there we went with the Corsair H75 so the reason that I chose this this CPU uh, cooler was one, space is limited. There's not a lot of airflow in here, so I didn't really want to go with an air cooler. You can fit, I think it says, you can fit up to 124 milliliter or millimeter air cooler in here. But again, the airflow isn't the best in here, so I wanted to go with an AIO. And since we got the i9 and it's gonna be, I'm assuming running pretty hot, I wanted to get the best um, that I could. You can only fit a 120 meter or millimeter fan in here. So I wanted to try to get the most cooling that I could out of it. So this is a, a dual fan uh, push pull setup here. So that's what we decided to go with. So we're gonna go ahead and get this installed. One thing that I did want to mention on this, it did come pre with thermal paste pre-applied. I took that off. I have been using in my last build and this build, Noctua NTH1 thermal paste. So it worked well for me, so I'm gonna stick with it and I'm gonna go ahead and apply this instead of the pre-applied. I don't think it's bad thermal paste. I mean, Corsair makes good products and I'm sure that their thermal paste is fine, but just from some of the videos that I've seen, they Corsair's thermal paste is not quite as good as Noctua's and some other brands. 
And I feel like, again, because of the I-9, it's going to be running hot. Any, you know, If I can get one or two degrees back from the thermal paste, then I'll take it. So with this thing, it didn't come with the fan already installed on there, so I went ahead and installed the fan already. So we are going to just drop this in here. Oh, that wasn't planned. So you can maybe run this with the hoses going on the top, but it gets a little tight and you'll see that when the mother or when the graphics card gets installed. So I found that running it down along the bottom makes the most sense. And so put that there. We're gonna get our other fan. And with these fans, uh, I don't know if I can see it, but there is little arrows on the fan. So you just want to make sure that the fans are basically pointed the same direction. So uh, let's just, I mean, they should be. I did this yesterday, but since I have a goldfish memory, we're going to go ahead and double check that. So put that in here. Then we are going to slide this fan in behind it. Let's get that cable down here. Like I said, cable management isn't the easiest thing to do in here, but again, you won't see any of the cables. Um, the only window that is in this case is on the top of the case. So cable management isn't the biggest deal in here, but you do want to kind of make it as clean as you can just for any additional airflow that you might get. So there's that. And I didn't mention earlier, but I had already put the back plate on for the Intel uh, back plate. This, this cooler is, you know, it's just like any modern cooler. It's compatible with every type of socket pretty much so whatever socket you have they have fittings in there for you so we're gonna set that here get a little sip of coffee because that's how wars are won like I said Noctua NTH1 it's pretty good I don't think it's necessarily the cream of the crop when it comes to thermal paste but it's pretty good, so what you're gonna do, I mean, there's different techniques for putting thermal paste on. I just do sort of the pea-sized dot in the middle. And that should be plenty. Get that put out of the way here. And then go ahead and get this thing mounted. So you're just gonna fit it over the four uh, mounting screws here. And then just go ahead and get these fittings tightened down. And again, I wouldn't wrench any one side down right off the bat, just get them on there so that it's holding it down. So I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, but this is my first Intel build, so I was kind of excited about it. Uh, I'm a big AMD fan. I think they make really good products, but you know, when it comes to cream of the crop, you know, Intel, at least as far as you know the gaming world and stuff. Obviously, the Ryzen 9 is out now, mother of God, and that's a incredible. CPU, the Ryzen 7s are great. I've had a Ryzen 7 and I liked it a lot. Sold that computer too. And that was a really good CPU. And you know, I had the obviously the Ryzen 5 that I just sold. That was a really good CPU as well. So but just wanted to, you know, give the give that a little bit of smush on there to get that thermal paste spread around. Just wanted to give Intel a try. You know, I've obviously I've used Intel before at work and laptops and such but as far as building my own and you know just to say at least 
at least for a moment, I had the best. Other than my wife. You know, never really had the best. So, now I can say I've at least experienced the best CPU, you know, at least, you know, that a normal person is going to buy, not some, you know, crazy Intel Xeon, you know, processor, because that's not really intended for normal folk like us. So this is on there pretty good. Again, none of these parts you really got to wrench down. You know, you kind of want to be gentle with, with this stuff. So I'm going to leave these cables, all the cables dangling a little bit for now. I don't want to put those in right away. Probably should have put the uh, power supply in before this, but you know, it is what it is. So you get that out of the way and go ahead and get this power supply in. So we're going to move this down here so I can show you guys what we got. We went with the EVGA Supernova 650 watt GM. It's a small form factor, 80 plus gold, really good power supply, 650 watts should be plenty of power for what we got going on here. Again, I've linked videos in the past for tech deals that does, you know, oh, and here's the, the power supply. So it is a small form factor. It is itty bitty. I mean, this is the screwdriver that I've been using. I mean, that thing is, it's tiny, 650 watts, fully modular, excellent. And the cool thing about this, you'll see some power supplies that have like the hybrid mode or the little button. This has an auto hybrid mode, so if it's not drawing a lot of power, it'll, you know, run the fan down or, you know, shut it off altogether, I guess, if it's not really drawing much power. So you're not going to be wasting power. And that's kind of the whole idea of, a, you know, getting a gold is you want some efficiency. So, but again, I've, I've linked to videos in the past on, I think, one of my other builds about power supplies. And, you know, a lot of times you feel, you see people like, oh, I'm building a, a great computer. So we're going to go ahead and put this fan down, obviously, because there's vents down in the bottom here. Slide it in. But yeah, they're like, you know, I'm building a, a big computer. I need to have, you know, a thousand watt power supply or whatever it is. And I mean, if that's what makes you feel comfortable, go for it. You got the budget for it, then go for it. But you know, I don't think that that's necessarily necessary, you know, necessarily necessary. Um, so I may link one of those videos as well, just so if you're seeing this and you're a little bit antsy about, oh man, only 650 watts, you know, maybe, but I'll link that video. But again, like I said, I have built this computer, turned it on to make sure everything worked. It had plenty of power. It's no big deal. So there it is. She's in there. You can see it doesn't take up a lot of space. You can fit a bigger power supply in here if you don't necessarily go with a small form factor. If you maybe get a compact power supply, it'll fit in there just fine, but you're going to be really limiting yourself as far as getting your cables installed in there. So for this computer, we got our 24 pin. So there is that installed. And I'm going to go ahead. Uh, let's see, should I hook that up now? Uh, we'll wait. We'll go ahead and get the rest of this installed. So, we got our CPU. This takes an 8 pin. So, we are going to put that in right now. So, the CPU cooler does come with a SATA, or a SATA powered um, light. It is lit up. It's just white. It's not RGB. It's just a white LED around the Corsair lights up. So we're going to go ahead and unfortunately have to put in one of our SATA cables. And then lastly, this case only has three fan headers and we are utilizing four fans. So we are going to be hooking up our 80 millimeter with the little what, Molex, I believe is what it is. Looks like that's about it, other than the graphics card. So we're gonna go ahead and get these cables hooked up right before we put this graphics card in. So there's that. So we got one last piece of equipment to put in here, and that is the graphics card. So we went with the Asus Turbo RTX 2060 Super. 
So the reason I went with the 2060 Super in this rather than something different is, you know, for most normal people, when you're building a computer, you have a budget. So you kind of have to find places to cut corners and save a few bucks. So for me, I mean, I'm not the world's biggest gamer. I do like to game and I'll put some benchmarks from Borderlands 3, uh, probably Call of Duty Modern Warfare, World War Z maybe. So gaming's big for me. I mean, I like to do it, but it's not my main thing. So I wanted to go all in on the CPU because I think computing power is just more important. So thought save a little bit of money, still get a good graphics card. It's going to play all the games that you want, AAA titles, esports titles, you know, 1080p, 1440p, and then, you know, certain AAA titles, you can still get pretty good resolution on 4K. Um, if as long as you're not playing at ultra, you know, I don't know who plays at ultra. I don't, I tend to play mostly on high settings, but good graphics card. Did a little bit of, you know, digging into different 2060 Supers. And the reason that I went with this one is because it is a, I'll show you that it's the back. Not much here, but um, yep, yeah, it's 2060 Super. But we went with this one because it's a blower style. And originally I didn't think much about that. I was kind of enamored with the look of the other card. But doing, just thinking about this a little bit more with a case that has restricted airflow, fans may not necessarily be the best choice. And if you can have a blower fan card where it's actually taking the heat and blowing the heat out of the case, uh, I think it may be beneficial. So that's why we made the decision that we did here on this graphics card. So Asus, I believe it's the Turbo, what do they call this thing? The, I don't know, Asus Turbo RTX. So there you go, it has all the normal stuff that a graphics card has when it comes in the box. So I don't need to pull that out for you guys just now. This is actually the first time that I'm opening this. So you guys can see me peel the plastic off. And from my understanding, this card, good heavens, um, maybe you guys won't see me peel the plastic off. All right, there we go. So from my understanding, this card does have a light, or I, it, the fan I believe does light up. We'll have to see once we get it powered up, but I'm, I believe it does. And then I believe that it also has, maybe the picture will show a little bit of RGB on it, but we probably won't see much of that because of the way the card sits in the case. So let's go ahead and just get all this off of here. Boom, there she is. Nice and clean looking. No backplate, but the way that it sits in here, it shouldn't be really an issue. Um, so there it is. Let's go ahead and get it installed. There's that. All right. So what do we got left? Just to put this back in the case. Actually, I'm gonna stop you guys right here and go ahead and get some of the cables tightened back up and then we'll jump back in and throw it in the case. All right, so we got everything installed now. We got some of the cable managed. I mean, most, all that I really can do, done. So there it is. Like I said, cable management isn't the biggest issue in this case because you're not gonna see the cables. The biggest issue with cable management is here is you want airflow. So try to keep all the cables away from the fans as best you can. So we did that here. So now we're going to go ahead and get that front face plate put back on. All right, so we got everything installed now. We got some of the cable managed. I mean, most all that I really can do done. 
So there it is. Like I said, cable management isn't the biggest issue in this case because you're not gonna see the cables. The biggest issue with cable management is here is you want airflow. So try to keep all the cables away from the fans as best you can. So we did that here. So now we're gonna go ahead and get that front face plate put back on. All right, got it installed. So we're gonna set that here, then bring the shell back up. Let's just get it sprayed off a little bit. And I'm gonna insert these cables. So we got the case cables connected in here and we are going to get ready and again try to get these out of the way if you can tuck them up over the fans just to give yourself that little bit of extra room for airflow and then you are going to be sliding that guide rail out and just setting this on top of that guide rail and then you're just going to slide it in Try to keep the cables, you know, pushed out of the way. And then it should just slide in. Just like that. So we're going to go ahead and power it up so you guys can see. So that is on. I'm going to go ahead and press the power button. Not sure that you can see, fans are spinning, air is blowing. So the motherboard does have some uh, RGB on it as well. So it'll cycle through, but that's it. So she's up and running, that's the full build. I'm gonna go ahead, turn it off, go hook it up, and then I will go through some, I gotta install the drivers for the graphics card, and then I will get some benchmarks put in here, and then that'll finish up the video. If you guys see this, go ahead and hit me up if you're interested. And if by chance you're on YouTube and you just stumble upon this build and you're interested, I'm gonna add or put the link in there for maybe the eBay listing and Mercari, maybe the Mercari app, and you know, whatever else site that I'm gonna list this on. I'm gonna go ahead and throw those in there. So if you happen to stumble on this and you're interested in getting this computer, go ahead and hit me up. All right, peace.